an introduction to index hedging and risk mitigation. This information is for education and entertainment purposes. Neither I or the information that I provide within this presentation should be considered financial advice and a recommendation in any way. Should you wish to undertake activities that are financial in nature, always seek professional advice and make decisions based on such. Let's look at an overview of indexes. Okay, index options. An index option is a derivative financial instrument that provides two parties the opportunity and or obligation to fulfill a contract agreement at a predetermined date or an expiration date. Simply speaking, an index option can be bought or sold in accordance with your opinion of future market direction. By selling puts, you're paid a premium for the right to earn the difference between the market loss and the strike price of that particular put. Alternatively, by buying a put, you effectively pay a premium for the right to settle the difference in the index and the strike when a decline occurs. Option buyers are generally considered risk averse with limited downside potential, whereas option riders or sellers have unlimited theoretical risk or risk potential. Settlement on the Australian XJO, or also known as the S&P ASX 200 index, is made by cash only. One party or the contract holder will receive, for example, $1,000 and the rider or seller will have to pay that $1,000. Now let's look at what you would see on a brokerage account when you look at XJO options. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see call options. You can see on the right hand side of the screen, indicated in the white and the light pink, put options. Now you can see above those two lines and all those all those listed options, December 16th, 2021. And that's what we call the expiration date or the settlement date of those particular options. Now in this particular example, we're going to look at in the money puts, or in other words, put options that are above the current market price. As you can see on this particular date, 7,267 was the index benchmark of the ASX 200. And as you can see on the top line of the red outlined put options, 7,275 was the nearest in money put option that expired in December or three months from the date of this video. Now, as you can see, the price or what we like to quote in points for a put option with an expiration in December for 7,275 was roughly 237 points. Now that is the average between 230 and 244. Now let's take a look at what would happen if we bought a put option and we saw a decline in the market within those three months of 4%. Now the current index value, as I just mentioned, is 7,267. And the amount that we paid for the put, and this is, this is a bit intricate, but I'm sure you can follow, is 237 points. Going back to the former screen, every number, including the 7,275, the listed index is actually listed in points, including the price that you would pay the premium for that option, which is 230 to 244, that particular range is listed as points. Now those points are always timed by $10 in the case of ASX XJO index options. The brokerage on this particular account that I use is roughly $33, depending on what account and what provider you use and what um, broker, that'll obviously vary. Now the strike total price, in other words, the price for the entire portfolio, the theoretical portfolio that this put option will encompass is $72,750. And that's simply the 7,275, the strike for that option times the $10 multiplier for the index. And what this really means is that by buying one option, one single option, a put, expiring in December, or what we like to call a December put on XJO, has a total coverage 
to the financial value of 72750 If you had a portfolio of $72,750 and you bought this particular option, that portfolio, considering the strike price is matched to the portfolio, is completely protected. That's something you need to consider. Now let's say that there was a market or an index decline of 4%, a broad decline, and that resulted in a point term, 6,976 point ASX XJO index at the time of the expiration, which is December 2021. Now the pre-cost profit, if you were to see a decline, as I mentioned from the $72,750 strike, to the current market value, the $69,760, is roughly $2,990. That's what you would receive if you were to ignore the premium and the cost of establishing the contract or what we call the brokerage, or taking on that contract, I should say. Now, the total profit is the next line down, and it's easily calculated as the total pre-cost profit, the $2,990, which can also be considered the difference between the strike and the current market price. And you have to consider the $2,370 premium plus the $33 brokerage. And in this particular case, with a 4% decline in the market on the $72,750 portfolio, you would unfortunately only receive a total benefit of $587. Now that is absolutely dismal considering that you have bought this particular put to protect a $72,750 portfolio, but we'll get to that in a second, all right? But keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at what would happen in the opposite case. The index increases, which is fantastic if you are long in the market, which is terrible if you are short in the market. The current index value, just like I mentioned before, 7,267, the amount paid is 237 points by the $10 multiplier, the brokerage of $33, and the strike you can see at $72,750. Now let's say the index increases 3%, which is very, very likely in, in the current market. And that takes it to $7,485, that's for the XJO uh, ASX200. Now the pre-cost profit in this particular case is actually a loss. at $72,750 minus the current market price mentioned in terms of the multiplier times the particular points, which is $74,850. That leaves you with a loss of $2,100, okay? Because you are short. Now the total profit in this particular case is not only the $2,100 as the pre-tax loss, but it's also a combination of that plus, it's, it's also inclusive of the premium that you paid on the option, which is the same as the former case, the $2,370, and, and also the brokerage um, that you'd have to pay to, to take on that put. Now that's a $4,503 loss, which is an abso absolutely terrible situation. But in this particular case, and this is, this is an important point, your maximum loss that you would receive if you had this option is actually $2,403, which is the sum of the total put premium plus the brokerage, which is the $33. Now, what happens if the index increases and you were to look at that in terms of a total portfolio protection? Now, imagine having a portfolio with a total value of $72,670. If the market value of your portfolio increased in exact proportion with the index, your total gain would be $2,180, okay? In effect, the option you purchased would have a limited loss hedge, or would be a limited loss hedge, which in this particular case had, had a total loss of $2,403 being the option premium and the brokerage fee. Now, what you need to understand, it's a bit like a seesaw. You take on a put, you go long a put, and you're in essence um, hoping that the market will actually decline and not increase. 
Now the net difference in this particular case is $223, which is the difference in the total premium that you would have to pay in the brokerage minus the total gain in the portfolio due to the increase. In the other case where we had a decline in the market by 4%, which is dramatic, uh, what you would see is if you had a portfolio of $72,670 and the market value of the portfolio declined in exact proportion with the index, your total profit or your total loss would be $2,180. Uh, that's a, in portfolio terms. In effect, the option that you purchased would be a limited loss hedge, much like the former case, which in this case had a total gain or profit of $587. Now, after the brokerage fee and option premium, it's a net difference of a $1,593 loss. So in both cases, there's a loss. Now, what particular point or concept does all this illustrate? So there are particular points in time where you may find uh, put options calculated at a reasonable level, given the potential for a decline in the market. And you can use this effectively as a hedging tool. But like the cases I've mentioned, where there's both an increase of 3% and a decline of 4% in the market, the total return you'll receive is both negative on a net basis considering the premium. So in this particular case, on this particular day, with a three month December put on the XJO, you'll find that the premium being asked is not reasonable, especially considering the outlook of the market. So what are some of the takeaways and lessons we can take out of these particular instances? Lesson one, like in this particular example, there are instances where portfolio hedging via options is largely futile. Option premiums can grow abnormally large. This is largely due to uh, market sentiment and mentality. Lesson two, all hedging activities result in the limitation of upside potential. Okay, and that is also due to premiums and premiums play a very large part in determining that upside. Lesson three, Hedging via options requires a presumption of a particular market movement. Making market predictions is not conducive with long-term profits, nor is it conducive with intelligent behavior when it comes to bringing your, uh, your financial assets to the market and to the table. Uh, you need to be intelligent. Lesson four, hedging has limited application and is almost always short-term focused. Consider these lessons when you go about your business in the market. Thanks for watching.